Hi there. Welcome back. You're listening to The Everglade Chronicles, a reading. I'm Garrett Shave, the author. Today I'll be reading Chapter 10, The Colors Fly. Venus had a sudden outburst, and now the children of the meadow are questioning their queen. Now let's get started. On a cool Friday evening when I reached the park, there was nothing but talk of the queen's outburst. It had spread across the city and into the village. There wasn't a farmer talking about it. When I found Ben speaking with Madison, I didn't have to ask what they were chatting about. I already knew it was the Queen's abrupt eruption. Did she really push the Major Domo over? Madison asked. I nodded. She did. It was really quite frantic. I turned to Ben. Might I see you for a moment? Ben and I went behind the grove of trees and we spoke quietly. I had finally read the note Sassy Cassie had given me and it spoke of a secret meeting. Since Ben was part of the agency now, he was entitled to know about it. It's sometime tonight, across the clover leaf and at the usual hideout, I told him. Are you dressing as Isis? he asked. Yes. The usual suspects were there when we arrived at twilight. Again, Matthew had been kind and brought snacks for us all. His family owned a convenience store, so the snacks were dirt cheap. Both Tyler and Mark were eager to get the show on the road, after hearing of the Queen's outburst the night before. Isis, Cassidy smiled. The meadow's masked marauder. There's a tongue twister for you, I laughed. Shall we get down to business? Tyler asked. I nodded and we all huddled near a tree stump. We were in the final stages of our plans, and as summer vacation neared, we would begin the battle. The first step of the plan is to anger the queen even more, Mark said. Revolutionaries from across the meadow will take part, not just the ones from the Lost Forest. This has to look like everyone in the kingdom is angry. When the queen tours the royal city for the annual last day of school, we will bombard her with ketchup and mustard balloons. Water balloons are a trademark of the forest, but the children throwing them will be an army livery, Tyler added. Devilish plan, Cassidy smiled. Farmers will then protest in the royal city, Mark carried on. This will show that the entire meadow is against her, even her own army. I like where this is going, I said. Have we thought about what to call our collective? Any colors come to mind? Flags? We have something in mind, Kale and Catherine spoke at once. From within their pockets, they withdrew some ribbon. It was the kind of ribbon you might wrap a hockey stick with, made of durable plastic. One roll was white and the other a neon orange. We thought these would be our colors, and we could wear these ribbons to show allegiance, Kale said, unrolling the orange tape. White stands for liberty and freedom. Orange stands for courage and strength, Catherine added. Then I shall guess we shall call ourselves the Liberation Army, I said proudly. I like the name, Cassidy beamed. Fits well. Do we have all the necessary supplies for an assault, Matthew asked. Hardly any right now, but we will have some when the time comes, Mark answered. Right now, we are working to anger the Queen and confuse her. If she thinks Skylar is betraying her, then she will only confuse herself. There will be several instances of anger, I can assure you of that, Cora said. Once it all goes down, as Lady Chloe's royal attendant, I can feed you all the information on what the Queen is saying and doing. Excellent, Cassidy rubbed her hands together. Shall we begin? Over the course of the next week, further final exams and studying for them kept me away from the meadow. Nonetheless, Sassy Cassie would find me in the library on some days and deliver the news. Things were not looking good for Venus. On Monday, a small band of forest dwellers threw pine cones at a royal patrol. Such an attack was reminiscent of a well-played battle a few months prior. On Tuesday, the children protested outside the military headquarters, and Abby complained about it later that evening to me while I studied. They were protesting their rights and the new taxes. On Wednesday, the day of my English final, it was Cora herself who told me that several teens dressed as soldiers outright attacked Sunset Village in a mock battle. No one was hurt, but it convinced Venus that the army was moving against her and disobeying the meadow's peace. Cora had laughed as she had described how furious Venus had been, and how she had shoved Skylar to the ground despite his pleas. He was jailed for the evening. When Thursday arrived, I was busy preparing for a math final in the afternoon, when Cassidy followed me into the girls' washroom. Here, she told me that Skylar had been evicted from Queen's Summit, and was disgracefully operating out of the military HQ. 
She also added that the village farmers had picketed around the royal city, waving their plastic pitchforks and shovels in anger. Just when I thought my brain would explode, Friday came and that was the last day of my tests. I was eager to visit the meadow to finally view with my own eyes what was actually happening. When I arrived, it turned out that many knew of our Liberation Army. I strolled into the village nonchalantly. The Duke was muttering and pacing. When I found Ben nearby, he filled me in. As it turns out, many of those children who were protesting were wearing orange and white, he explained. Before long, the entire meadow was chatting about the Liberation Army. It is good the Queen knows then, I said. Before we could finish our talk, the Duke called me to his throne. Where have you been? he asked frantically. All these protests and attacks have me worried. Sorry, Your Grace, I bowed. I had some final exams to do. Hudson ignored me. I think the Queen will cancel her tour of the capital next week, given the recent events. Haven't you heard? I hear bits and pieces, yes. There was a revolutionary army afoot, he gasped. They are calling themselves the Liberation Army. Oh, how dreadful. I should think all of us nobles and royals will face the guillotine if they win. I am not sure if it will be that severe, Your Grace, I replied calmly. I trust in Her Majesty to win this civil war, as we triumphantly won the Battle of the Lost Forest and ousted the traitor crest. Hudson was chattering away and biting his nails like a nervous schoolboy. I fear for my head, Jessica. I fear for it. Never have I ever been so frightened in my life. Do you have a plan? Does the Queen have a plan? Certainly. Or at least I should think so. I have no idea, he whelped. Lord Schuyler is a branded traitor. I am sure you have heard about the soldiers attacking our farms. Oh, the humanity! Calm down, Your Grace, I said hastily. The entire meadow was in chaos. I stepped back as the Duke muddled and continued to bite his nails. This was exactly what we had planned. We wanted the royals shaking in their boots. The mass hysteria had spread, and it was guaranteed that many of the Queen's most intimate courtiers were worried for their heads. With the army in disarray, now was the time to strike. I found Mark leading a protest in the Lost Forest. Dressed as Isis, I decided to join in. The cowardly Lord Ashton was held up in his keep with barely a guard to save him. While we chanted and threw stones, there came no reply. I wondered to myself if Lord Ashton was waiting for his beloved queen to send an army to save him. Suddenly, from behind us, Sassy Cassie came riding in on her mountain bike. Hanging from the handlebars were strips of orange and white ribbon. Looking around, I had just begun to notice that the protesters here were sporting orange and white ribbons, too. One lad was even waving an orange and white flag. Cassidy was holding a small plastic bugle, similar to the one the Queen's Herald had. She blew into it twice, and the small army moved with her. Mark withdrew some ribbon from his pocket, and I strapped it around my forehead, covering a bit of my mask with orange and white. Ahead of us, the entire path was lined with more Liberation soldiers, all wearing something orange and white. Their spirit let my heart, and I knew what we were doing was right. A few more teens joined us on their bikes, and many more marched with us. Stop! called a voice. The bikes halted and the children stopped marching. Ahead of us stood Skylar, wearing his pointed army hat and cowering in his cape. Around him, several of the Queen's soldiers were poised to strike with their plastic swords. They looked like a wall. Skylar withdrew his sword, and Sassy Cassie reached for her cap gun. Surprisingly, the Major Domo tossed it onto the path before us. <laughs> Hi there. I'm just going to interrupt the reading of this episode to talk about the Ask the Author mini-episode that's coming soon. Do you have some burning questions about the book or the author that you want answered? Find the post promoting this episode and ask your questions. Find us on Instagram or Facebook. The mini-episode will take place after Chapter 11, so get to writing those questions in the comments. Time is almost up. Now, back to the novel. Perplexed, we all looked at each other. I wish to join you, he said simply. How can we be certain? Mark asked him loudly. The queen would not listen to me, he explained. I tried and I tried to tell her that the attack was fake and not real. I know you all organized the mock battle. 
Nonetheless, Venus has gone mad, and I have been thrown out. These teens with me, these cumbersome few, are the only ones who support me now. The rest fall in with Ryan and Abby, and the rest of the military. I simply wish to join your noble cause, but only if I am justly rewarded. Rewarded? huffed Cassidy. I shall reward you with a shot to the head. Skylar held out his hands in peace. Go ahead, shoot me. I will boldly restart. But when I do, I will join your crusade anyway as one of the many. But if I am to restart, all my army knowledge goes with it. I will be able to tell you nothing, nothing of what the Queen's plans are. He is right, you know, Mark said. Having Skylar on our side would be helpful. I don't think we can trust him, I remarked. What would you claim is your reward? Cassidy asked. A dukedom, he said. That is all I ever wanted. The queen should have made me the new duke of the lost forest, but instead it fell to that imbecile Ashton. I will join your cause for a dukedom when we win this war. I suppose a duchy can be arranged, Sassy Cassie said loudly. You have my word. Regretfully so, Mark and I helped don the major domo in orange and white ribbon, along with his troop of soldiers. Skylar could not help but admire the Meadow's hero, Isis. Fighting alongside the famous Meadow hero, how exciting is that, he said most deviously. Keep your eyes forward, soldier, I replied rudely. Now Skylar was not a lord, but simply another soldier. The Liberation Army was free of status, and free of titles beyond lord and lady. He would boss no one around any more. Our small army overran the capital in a matter of minutes. Those worthy of joining us tied ribbons of our colors around their wrists and foreheads. Not everyone joined us, but we had amassed a large following. Soon enough, we had set up camp, and the capital was nothing but a sea of orange and white. I could not help but wonder where the army had gone, if they were not defending the capital. Such a battle should have at least had some resistance. The only real resistance we had were the children defending the military HQ. They fell easily at the sword, however. Where is the queen? I asked Cassidy if the army had settled. Where is the army? I have no idea, she said, placing her hands on her hips. It does seem odd, doesn't it? Tyler and Matthew are leading a battle in the village as we speak, Mark said. Perhaps they are there, defending the village. I nodded. Hudson was always the one to have himself prepared and defended, but the farmers and the villagers would not fight for him. In my mind, I viewed Hudson as easily captured. Perhaps those who fought for the Queen were there, defending Hudson? We have some scores of children here, Cassidy said, looking over her ranks. Most of the real army is here with us. Very few support the Queen now. A deep feeling in my gut told me that there was something very wrong going on. Skylar's army had once been mighty and unstoppable. The numbers here were nothing compared to his pre-war mass. As I pondered, Cassidy and the others were beginning to give orders. We shall all amass here, she yelled triumphantly. No one shall go anywhere until we have a confirmed victory in sunset. Let's go and have a look, Mark suggested. Cassidy can remain here. She is more than woman enough to command all these kids. I nodded and Cassidy blushed. I was uncertain about leaving her with the former Lord Schuyler, given he could turn on us at any time. He, however, gave us a sincere look, and we made for the village. Sunset was overrun when we arrived. The Duke's throne had been tossed asunder, and the farmers were everywhere, waving liberation banners and holding their pitchforks. Cora was standing near the grove of trees, her arms folded. She wore a summer dress of tangerine and had white stripes tied around her forehead. I noticed her nails were painted in elegant orange as well. Oh, there you all are, she said casually. Where is Sassy Cassie? We have captured the royal city, I said. Cassidy is defending it with our forces. Lord Schuyler has crossed over to our side too. He has sworn his allegiance. Cora pursed her lips. I would trust that general as far as I could throw him. What is the situation here? Mark asked thoughtfully. We have the Duke on the run, she explained. Both Tyler and Matthew have him cornered, along with your sister and Ryan. I swallowed hard. Abigail was such a staunch supporter of the regime. I had forgotten how she might feel about our revolution. If she ever discovered I was Isis, she would surely lose her temper. Where is Ben? I asked. He is leading the teens, along with the others. Cora led us around the grotto and down a small path that was barely used. When we came over the small hill that dipped into a tiny field, we saw them. 
Hudson and his minuscule army were pushed against the water's edge. Another step and they would be waterlogged. Hudson himself was mostly cowering, but at least ten teens and other children were standing their guard, poking their plastic swords forward in defiance. My sister and Ryan were among the captured, fruitfully fighting back. Tyler, Matthew, and Ben were pointing swords, too. It was a standoff to see who would surrender first. Give it up, Matthew was saying as we approached. The village is lost. Hardly, Abby spat. We shall fight till we restart. When they caught sight of us, a few were wide-eyed. Well, if it isn't the Meadow's hero, Hudson had a sudden burst of courage. Come to slice off a ducal head, have you? No, I said firmly. You must surrender now. We have you cornered. The royal city has been captured by our liberation army, Mark said happily. Soon enough, we shall storm Queen's Summit and the reign of Venus will end. I knew this would happen, Hudson wailed. Venus is weak. This is no time for crying, you little baby, Ryan hissed. This has gone on long enough, Cora sighed, reaching for her cap gun. With one smooth movement, she fired. The cap flew off and made a loud pop noise that echoed across the water. She had pointed at Ryan's head, and he ceremoniously and most dramatically fell to the ground. "'Good gravy!' I yelled. "'You've killed Ryan!' My sister stared up at me as if a sudden revelation had crossed her mind. I covered my mouth in shock. Only Jessica Walker had ever said good gravy. "'Jessica?' Abby asked, half scared. "'Your Isis?' I nodded bleakly, and in a split second she flew forward at me. With her sword extended, Abby came at me as quickly as a snake biting after a mouse. I lunged out of the way and Cora began firing again. Swords were no match for the gun she held, and many of Hudson's remaining troop fell to the ground. Don't kill me! Please don't kill me! Hudson shrieked. Tyler and Matthew stood forward, clutching him on either arm. We won't kill you, Tyler said, grinning maliciously. You are our most valuable prisoner now. Meanwhile, Abby was busy regaining her stance. How could you betray the queen like this? Betray the natural order of the meadow, she huffed. Ben threw me a sword and I met my sisters tip for tip. They seemed to glimmer, ready for a fight. The queen's rule is treason itself, I said, slashing away. Her sword caught mine again and we were locked. She treats the citizens like common dogs. Her own aristocracy is nothing but a jumbled mess of immature brats and heretics. You're foolish, she growled, stabbing forward. I hopped back. I wish you could see things from my perspective, but I am a loyal, obedient, and humble servant of Her Majesty. I dove back and came at her right arm. She balked and nearly tripped, but regained her energy quite quickly. We parried and danced for a few moments without a word. She was good with a sword. All her military training had done her well. I was merely fighting by instinct. I had no former training. This must end, she said at last, breathing heavily. You must admit your treason and die by my sword, dearest sister. I will not be restarting today, I growled. You must open your eyes and realize that the monarchy is at an end. There will be a new ruler soon enough. I support Queen Venus, she yelled, lunging towards me. I could feel her anger. I knocked her sword away with all my might, and the loud banging echoed across the woods. Her sword fell, and she gasped as it hit the ground. Stop! All of you, stop! It was Hudson's meager and whining voice piping up. Abby reached for her sword, but Cora kicked it away. She aimed her pistol at my sister's head, but I held out my hand. Don't shoot, I begged her. Cora held her grip, and Abby froze. Venus is nothing but a farce, Hudson admitted sourly. Take it for myself, Abby. She is nothing but a rude girl. This cannot be, Abby was confused. I have served her well, and she has rewarded me. The queen is good. She cannot be evil. Even Hudson admits she is evil, Ben said. Surely that must count for something. I helped her win that bloody spruce battle, and what did I receive? Nothing. I received nothing for my work and hard dedication to such a battle, Hudson was grumbling again. You received the gratitude and thanks of your sovereign, Abby snarled. You do not need material goods to receive the thanks of a humble queen. I think she's a good-for-nothing, Hudson huffed. And here all of you are, attacking my duchy. That's enough out of you, Tyler growled. Shall I fire now? Cora yawned. It seems we cannot convert her. She is a treasonous girl. Abby hissed and threw herself to her feet. 
I gasped, and it all happened so quickly. She pushed her hand forward, and Cora's gun flew. She used her other hand to push the girl over, and within a ten-second span, Abby was running off. We barely had time to even think about stopping her before my sister had sprinted past the bushes. Well, Mark sighed after a moment of silence and disbelief. She's gone to the Queen. Sorry we couldn't save your sister, Cora grumbled as Ben helped her to her feet. I folded my arms. That's all right. At least we know she's chosen her path. When the bulk of our army returned to the royal city, Cassidy was under siege. While we joined the fight, Cassidy was in disarray and confused. The men came from over the hills, she explained, slashing her sword. Scores of girls, boys, teens, and what have you. All of them. Hollering for the queen. We were caught unawares. I thought Skylar knew the queen's plans, Mark asked frantically. That filthy rat crossed over again, Cassidy gritted her teeth. Have a look. I squinted my eyes across the field. While the capital was behind us, we were busy fighting in the field adjacent to the asphalt path. Skylar was there, with Lord Kevin. They were dressed in red capes and soldier caps on their heads. The Major Domo looked triumphant as he plowed through the rebels. I could say so many inappropriate words about him, Cora huffed, but I shall save them for later. Queen's Summit is heavily guarded, a voice said suddenly. We all turned around to find Kale and Catherine about, dressed in matching orange and white. We tried to invade with a small band of kids, Catherine said sadly. Those massive ninth graders are good protectors, Kale added. We were the only ones to escape, his sister finished. This is troublesome, Tyler said, rubbing his chin in thought. At least we captured Hudson. How will we oust the Queen, then? I asked. Skylar has crossed back over, and it seems the Queen has as many supporters as we do. Where are all these kids coming from? You guys figure that out, Mark said. Us boys shall go and join the fray. Matthew let out a blood-curdling war cry, and the three boys dashed into battle. I think I might have an idea, I pondered. Surely you're going to share it with us? Cassidy asked, frantic. I looked across the meadow at the ensuing battle. Skylar, the fool, had betrayed us. I knew he would. Oh yes, and here it is. That concludes Chapter 10, our readings for this week. Join me next time when we start Chapter 11, Storm the Keep. With soaring colors, the Liberation Army moves on Queen's Summit in a final assault. Find the post promoting this episode, or watch for the special Ask the Author posts and ask your questions for the mini-episode, which will come after Chapter 11. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Shimmer by Captures provides the music. Find us online on Facebook by searching The Everglade Chronicles or at Everglade Chronicles on Instagram. I appreciate your support. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Everglade Chronicles novels, you can find them exclusively on Amazon. Thank you and see you next week.